nombre es Juanita Lolita. Can you say for me, Juanita Lolita? Juanita Lolita. Ay, that's good for a bunch of gringos. It's a funny name, huh? Juanita Lolita. Do you know what is funny to me about the name? I don't talk like that. <laughs> I don't know how to speak Spanish. Juanita Lolita is my real name. <laughs> Thank you for the laughter. Do you have any idea how hard it is to have the name Juanita Lolita and not know how to speak Spanish? <laughs> Especially because every job that I have ever had, well, other than mowing lawns for a living, because that's what I do now, I mow lawns for a living. Come on, with the name Juanita, I was destined to hold a leaf blower. <laughs> but every other job's required that I have on a name tag. So inevitably, at some point during the day, some Spanish-speaking individual's gonna walk up to me and go, ay, Juanita! And you know how fast Spanish people talk? They are halfway through their life story and how they came to this country before I can say no comprendo. <laughs> and this one guy was so mad at me. <gasps> Your name is Juanita and you cannot speak Spanish? It was like he wanted to take my name away. And I said, that is not how names work. Just because my name is Juanita does not mean I know how to speak Spanish because I do not. Just like not all women named Mary are happy. <laughs> right? Not all gentlemen named Frank speak openly and honestly. And not one Jesus that I know, which is spelled J-E-S-U-S -S like Jesus, can walk on water. There she is. We have her, Juanita Lolita. <laughs> I think that's right. You didn't even butcher that. No, you know? Juanita good, Lolita. I mean, I love the name. Good job. As a Christian comedian that has performed comedy all over Florida, she finished runner-up as the funniest comic in Central Florida, and she was voted the funniest female in Tampa, Florida. Wow. Her mission field is to bring the light of God into secular comedy clubs through her clean comedy, which we really need. Yes. A little and, bit of clean and comedy. And she gave me a t-shirt that I can jog in. So if they go to your website, because we're going to have that up, not only can you hire her yes. wherever you are in the world, okay? <laughs> yes, wherever you are, yeah. please. Yeah, and can can they get one of these? Yes, they can purchase that t-shirt. I'd, love, I'd love that, because it's, it's like stand-up comic brick wall. Except you won't see a cross like that because most yeah. of them really have some serious profanity. Yes. Which camera? Right yes. there. Oh, great. Hey, that's, that's a great picture. So I'm going to wear this jogging. Very nice. Can't wait. Yay. Sharon, can I put this on your chair? You can do whatever no, okay. you would like. Good to have you. <laughs> to a Good point. Good to be here. I'm happy to be here and I'm not at all nervous. <laughs> Aren't you? I'm fine. You, is this kind of like your first comedy skit yes <laughs> how, interview yes yeah. how do you pull that off i mean it's like okay i'm going to get up in front of people mm -hmm. and all i have is a microphone and, and i've god. got and huh? god and god mm -hmm. and i have to make them laugh i do and yes. if they don't laugh you've bombed Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next time I go on stage, I'll be very nervous. No. Um, Have it, you ever had absolutely always. no response? When I, in some of the secular clubs I've performed where there's like two people in the audience. Two people. Two. <laughs> two, two. Two people in the audience. So, uh, you know, there's, there's times. There's times. That, so you, you know, actually. To me, that's the hardest job. It is. is. Like right now, just, just this is harder for me than being in front of seven well, thousand. Are you yeah. serious? Oh, yes. it's because you're well, out of your. I'm serious now because I'm not on duty. Yeah, it's yeah. because you're Usually not used to this particular. You're, you're used to doing. But I'm used to to, I can't imagine. People. I can't imagine getting up there and then trying to say something funny and nobody laughs. I mean, to me, that would be like. <laughs> All right, y'all are real. I, I can't do this anymore. I have to. I, I'm never doing comedy again <laughs> after speaking with you guys. I'm now done. it's going to get in your head. I'm done. It is. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> I haven't really had. Lord, where's Wood? I haven't really had a bad show where, you know, where people have done mm -hmm. that. I, it's been quiet sometimes, but 
you know, I've been blessed. That, oh, that's but great. there's been times where you'll say a joke that any other place I, will kill, and then this one time you're like, Are you an extrovert? This thing on? Yeah. <laughs> Am I a what? Extrovert. I was, but I took medication, and I don't. I'm not anymore. <laughs> it's good. Thank you. No. <laughs> Very mellow now. Uh, your career started on a dare, or what? Uh, I was in a dinner theater years ago, and one of the other casts, there's two different casts that did the dinner theater. We alternated. So it was a secular dinner theater? It was a secular dinner Where theater. Where you hear a lot of cussing? Uh, no. Dirty no, no, jokes? No, 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 no. It wasn't like that, or okay. I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't right. have been a part of it. Because um, that, that comedy clubs are kind of like Comedy that. clubs are really bad. Yeah. Yeah, comedy clubs are really bad. But this one gentleman that I worked with that I really didn't know, he's like, you're really funny. I'm going to sign you up for a comedy show, comedy at a local, you know, comedy club. He I'm just, like, okay, sure he you He just will. said that? Yeah, and he did. I got an email from the comedy club saying, you have seven minutes on this date. And I was like, <gasps> Seven minutes is a long time. <laughs> it is a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a long time. So. Yeah. So, so you had to put together your own material? I did. I, I wrote a seven-minute monologue, you know, coming from acting. I'm just like, I'll just get up there and do seven minutes. So and you're I an did. actress, too. I did. I am. I was. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> not really at all. No. No. I'm acting now. I'm not really a comedian. That's good material. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you had your own lawn service? I do. I, d I did. I did. I did. <laughs> Not anymore. Nope, never she did. did. I, All right. I, I did. I, I ask her. This, okay. You know, you say Christian, Christian comedian, actress, and then it says lawn person, stock clerk, which right. doesn't go together. I know it does. Was it Home Depot stock clerk? Uh, actually, public supermarket. We're shopping. It's a pleasure. Ooh. <laughs> Do that for Have myself. you ever done any commercials for them? No, I should you after should this, have. hopefully. Maybe I will. But so, no, I, I, comedy was never something I thought I was or I, even acting. It was just mm -hmm. something I did for fun. You know, the acting was. So I worked um, full-time doing lawn care for over 20 years. So if you really in, make it in stand-up comedy, do you usually have a lawn service? I, I actually have one now. Because I gave the lawn care business to my son-in-law and on the stipulation he would mow my lawn. So. <laughs> So he has that, and I have a lawn that's done. Yeah. I've made it. <laughs> you have. What is Next the, level. Yeah. What is the biggest group you've ever stood in front of and had to get them laughing? Oh, like I said, God has just opened up doors in this industry for me that you wouldn't imagine. And my about 15th time ever on stage, uh, Creflo and Taffy Dollar invited me to perform at their women's conference. 7,500 mm -hmm. women. Wow. In Atlanta? In Atlanta, in their, their yeah. world changers oh, yeah. dome. Yeah. So yeah. 7,500 women. So it was actually easy because you know with all those people, somebody's going to laugh. Exactly. <laughs> At the least more one people, of them is going to think something is funny. But, you know? but, but, but they are great people. They yeah, are. His group. They were absolutely wonderful. Yeah. They, they treated me amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. I had a chauffeur and a, I had a, an assistant and here I am, yeah. I mow lawns for a living, yeah. right? And here I'm like geeking out because they called and said, we're in the lobby of the airport and so when you get down here, That's the way know, they treat you. Yeah, there's yeah. someone standing there with a sign and I was like, oh! So of course I go running over, take my picture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just, because it was so exciting. It was yeah. just amazing how they treated so me. So what was your material? What was my material? Yeah, when you stepped on stage with how many? 7,000? 7,500. 7,500. 7,500. It was huge. It was huge. It was just, it, it was the same. It was just the, he the normal many, everyday life. He has that every Sunday, uh, that many in the green. He has, this was just women. This was a yeah. women's conference. Yeah. So we're not even talking his. You know, the upper mm. balconies weren't even open. Oh, my this goodness. This was just the lower levels, uh -huh. 7,500. So. so you say yeah. you start out. I'm Juanita. Juanita Lolita, because of the name, it's so good for me to talk like this because everyone assume I'm going to be like this the whole time I'm on stage. Okay, and you because speak Spanish fluently, right? I don't, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not remotely. Not why at did, all. Why did you get that name? Ask my mom and dad. They gave it to me. That's my real name. And they're not Spanish either? My mother is Spanish. My dad is a hillbilly, so. <laughs> So I'm a hillbilly Rican, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so your mother spoke Spanish. She does. But she, she never does. taught it to you? No. Um, and my sister knows Spanish. She's fluent Spanish. She was born in Miami. But they moved here to St. Pete um, when she was pregnant with me, and we had no, there was no Spanish speaking around here. So yeah. I didn't learn it. So, well, but it goes wrong well with the comedy now. now. <laughs> yes, yeah. there is. There's a lot of Spanish speaking. <laughs> That's you, right. you always close your show with things you don't understand. I do. 
I do, because there's so many. What don't you understand? Why spandex clothing is sold in extra large. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen these women, they shouldn't be wearing it. I'm just yeah. saying. And yeah. believe it or not, they actually wear the, I mean, we were at Disney and you see them. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of things I don't understand. Okay, <laughs> anything else? Because I want to help you. Because this is you want to help me. We are. We are. Doing, is this Herman and Sherpy's therapy yes, session? That's right. That's exactly <laughs> what right. You're telling You'd to be me. surprised how many in 32 years we have helped. You have helped. Okay. Why do pilots have to tell you the cruising altitude when you're on an airplane? Hmm. We've reached our cruising altitude of 36,000 feet. I don't need to know that. No, it's true. They need to lie to me. I'm a woman. I'm used to it. <laughs> well, you've reached our cruising altitude of 36 feet. There you go. <laughs> That's good. That's all I need to know. That's it. That's it. That's yeah. true. You know, I never thought about that, but there is no reason for us to know that. No. No. It, it, That's high. That's high. Yeah, it is high. very high, yes. Okay, your jacket, he just, he just told me right on there. See My that jacket? little screen right there? Your yeah. jacket is rubbing your microphone. I think it's actually not our jacket, it's our hair. Is that okay? Yeah, there you go. Right. See, this is live television, and we take care of things <laughs> right now. Right we away. don't put it off, uh, so keep your hair out of your mic. Will okay, you? I'll, it has a mind of its own. Okay, there you and, go. By the way, we were, we were talking, uh, and I said, why is it, because I watch medical shows sometimes, mm -hmm. and you know when they pe pick up people with an ambulance, and, guy, and a guy is sitting there next to him trying to keep them alive while they get to the emergency room, and they'll say to them, you are bleeding profusely. We don't know if we can stop the bleeding. We hope so. And I'm watching and I'm going, why? <laughs> why would you tell the That's person, right. they may not, I mean, you out of your mouth, they're bleeding to death is basically what you're saying. I told her, I said, if I ever get picked up like that and the guy starts telling me, I'm going to punch him out. That's right. Because, <laughs> well, it'll be hard because you're bleeding to death. Yeah. Yeah. But I completely understand. You know, if, if a person's bleeding to death, the last thing you want to do is yeah. make their heart beat We don't more. know. You know exactly. We don't know if are going to make it. Yeah. So we're, we're, keep calm. Yeah, right. That's, you never know. Yeah. Well, we just need to tell you, you're bleeding really <laughs> yeah. bad. You, don't you ever may tell. never make it out of this, but you never tell good. Herman that know. he's bleeding because boom, <laughs> yeah. he'd be that's, out like a lion. Obviously, do. And we don't tell him about other things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you have, you have clean comedy. I do in secular clubs. <gasps> okay, now so can't you just see them when they're sitting there? You're walking out, and they're thinking, oh, boy, she's going to have some jokes. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. And do you I'm tell them this is clean? clean? No. I don't tell them ahead of time. I'll tell them at the end. Toward the end, before I do my last joke, I tell them that I'm a clean comedian. I'll say, I don't know if you realized it or not, but I did all clean comedy for you up here. And most of the time, they don't even know. They don't even realize it, because mm -hmm. they're laughing, which is the good thing. You know, that's yeah. what I want. And yeah. I tell them in the secular clubs why I do clean comedy. It it's used to be. To glorify yeah. God. You know, I mean, in our, no, in no, our so group. Can, can I have her say no. that again? Can what? I have her say no. that again? You say, you, say, you say what? In the secular clubs, after I, at the end, I tell them that I did all clean comedy and I hope they enjoyed it. And I say, I, it's not because I have any problem with any other comedy. And I have to say that so that I don't offend headliners or anybody yeah. else mm -hmm. that's there. And I say the reason I do clean comedy is because I do my comedy to glorify the Lord. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. So I have a t-shirt available after the show to so stand up for him. You know, so I and does anybody that. have a problem with that? I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I've already gotten I mean, paid. Yeah, no, not yet, actually. But I mean, if, if comedians are up there and they're using Christ's name in vain, which is what they do, uh, I have no, to hear this all the time, and, and I'm going to stand up there and I'm going to use his name in glory. Mm -hmm. they, they can't stop me. You know, we used to, when we were you know, young people. Which was years ago. I mean, years we're, ago. We're, we're older but I mean, than that's all it was on. Are we going to flashback now? Are we going to see it? Yeah. Okay. That's all it was on. You're going to see a picture of both. In fact, it's right over back. there. It's right. They got the door closed now. I yeah. was like, that's a picture of Jesus. I don't think that was you. No, no, <laughs> no we're down there below. See? Oh, below. We're below okay. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 Well, years okay. ago. Anyway, there was nothing but clean comedy on television. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, and it was funny. It was it great. Was funny. You know, I don't know. Why do you think they had to go to this? Just for shock value, for I suppose. For shock value, which is no longer shocking. It's no, it more isn't. shocking now if you're clean. Exactly. Wow. You got That's that the right. Truth. It's more shocking. So you should yeah. be in a man. I should be. <laughs> After this show. After this show. After this show. After this show. Your, your phone, I mean, we have a website. There it is. My website. Uh, they're they're going to blow it out. Yeah, I hope I you hope can so. take a lot of webbing. 
I hope I'll have to call my, my people. I'll have to call my people. Okay. Yeah. When were you saved? Oh. And if you're not, I can lead you to the Lord right here. Right here and right now. Yeah. Right here and right now. Um, I was very blessed that I, I was raised in, a, in an environment that knew Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, my whole life, which was very, very good. And there's been several times I went to a Christian school, St. Pete Christian, and you know, so I oh. was always taught the Lord and I always knew God, I always knew God. And mm -hmm. I remember at a young age going forward, and I can't remember exactly, that was a long time ago, I yeah. tell you, yeah. um, exactly when that was. And, but I can remember certain points in my life over and over again that I just rededicated my life. And I think we have to do that. Just like mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul oh, yeah. says, you have to die daily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I think every day we need to die to self. And, and rededicate our life to Christ. Because yeah. So are you doing this without finances from the lawn service now? Yes. So this is like this full is time. So you stepped out on the water. I, I did, I did. And I haven't taken my eyes off Jesus and he hasn't taken his eyes off me. It's been incredible mm -hmm. what's happened. I mean, absolutely incredible. I haven't been doing comedy very long at all. And I'm already you know, I've, I've traveled to Tennessee and Georgia and Alabama, and and I, it's how did it's you get amazing. the how did you get the word out to people that you were going to start doing this? Oh, <laughs> I think that was more God than anything. It wasn't me. I how did you get on this show, by the way? How did you get here? A friend of mine that's in my Bible study dropped off my information to you. So thank you, Pat, for doing <laughs> that for me. Oh. She dropped off um, the information, and then you all contacted me. And here it is, just just what three months after I I stepped out and left the lawn care business, yeah. and said, "Okay, Lord, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense for me to do it at all. Yeah, it did. It, it it still doesn't. When you when you look back, it's like, okay, you know, wow. no, you gave up all of your income. You've got no retirement. You have absolutely nothing. So, are you gonna, married? I am. And what did your husband think about this whole thing? He thought I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been married a long time, so he knew I was crazy. He yeah, knew I was crazy. Yeah. But, but he and supported I, I went to you? him first. I went to him first because yeah. he's the head of the household, mm -hmm. you know, and I gave him that and I said, this is what I want to do. And, and uh, he, he put it off for a couple months and, and then finally I, um, I, I said, you know, I'm outside the will of God. I really feel like this is what he wants me to do. And, and he said, okay, if you think God wants us to live in a box, then you stop <laughs> mowing lawns. So I took that as a yes. And <laughs> so, so apparently, he, so apparently his like, job yeah. wasn't a big backup then. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in today's society, yeah, you have to have two, two incomes. That's you right, really you do. do. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, we, we're a normal, you know, you yeah. live paycheck to paycheck, yeah. you know, blue collar family, and, and I'm going to quit my job, you know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're going to get so. a big tax hit, though, coming up next year. Well, thank you for that. So <laughs> between that and then... Um, <laughs> thank you for reminding so me. So between that and I should be worried about bombing. What else are you going to tell me, <laughs> Herman, <laughs> about the bleeding to death? Let's I'm just trying, keep going. This I'm is good. Trying, I'm trying to prepare you <laughs> for, a, for everything. the for everything. eventual. <laughs> Can uh, you be funny through all this? That's I, what will, we know. I will. I will. Can know, you keep okay. laughing? I will. I will okay. keep laughing. Hopefully. Through all My this. next question. Okay. I'm scared you, now. Do, I'm scared. Do, do you see this as a long-term career? <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Thank you. Uh, up until now, I, I thought forever. And uh, I'm thinking I need to get back yeah. into the lawn care business yeah. <laughs> when I leave here in the heels and everything. I'm just going to go mow a lawn. Now, what, do you all have a lawn care service? You, I, I need to know. Well, we got the whole <laughs> front yard is all gravel and backyard too. Those are the best ones. Yeah. <laughs> a lot less for me to do. <laughs> you can just pull up front, just pull up front and yeah. say, I've got the equipment. Don't this worry about it. it. Yeah. Well, we got some bushes. We got bushes mom. she can trim, but that's, that's about it. it. Anyway. Okay. I I actually, I do. I think of it and it's funny that you say that because, um, like I was telling you, I didn't have any retirement. I had no savings, you know, anything yeah. like that. Because I worked at Publix part time. Mm -hmm. It's an awesome company to work for, but I only did it part time because I had my lawn care business. Yeah. So when I really felt like God was saying, "Okay, you need to leave Publix. You need to leave Publix," I'm going, oh, "I can't do it. I can't do it." So I went to my sister, whom I love dramatically. And she works for public. She's worked there over 40 something years. So Good. She, she bleeds green. Okay. So when yeah. I went to her and said, yeah. I'm leaving public, she's like, oh, no, you know, yeah. you need to have a retirement. You don't have anything. You're just now getting, you know, yeah. you're, you've been here a year. You can start being vested. And, and, um, and I was like, okay. But I just still felt that. 
And then one Sunday, she was able to come with me to church. And Pastor Danny at Calvary Chapel, he was up there and he said, um, because I don't normally do this, but there is somebody here that God is calling you to do something and you're afraid to do it. And it's going to mean quitting your job or changing your life and you need to do it. So here I am on the front row bawling because I know it's for me, you know, and I just want to stand up and tell everyone else, I'm sorry, that's mine. And then my sister, I look over at her and she's crying and she goes, you have to leave Publix, you know, and it was, she just knew. She knew. And, and the next day I was um, watching Charles Stanley on television and his whole sermon was about you never retire from doing the will of God. Mm-hmm. You will always, you know, and it was, it was just everything I needed to hear. God was like, here you go. Here you go. What else do you need? What else? Here you go. Here. Because wow. yeah. you don't, you know, <coughs> as mowing lawns or, or working at Publix, I wouldn't be able to do that in my 80s wow. or 90s or however long God keeps well, me true. here. That's but true. I can always be up on a stage or I can always be promoting the gospel. Look at Phyllis Diller. Right. Well, she's dead now. Not <laughs> yeah, a good yeah, thing to yeah, look yeah, at, yeah, but yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> look how old she was. Yeah, well, she had about 16 <laughs> facelifts. Thanks for that one. Yeah. Okay, so now I have four things I'm concerned about. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I'm going to have to try to think of somebody who, else now. That's still alive. alive. <laughs> who, who led you to Christ? Who led me to Christ? Oh. Was there a who? I don't really think. I mean, so there wasn't someone there, that there sat wasn't a down person with that me. Said, she said she went forward in, uh, in, in, yeah, but in I thought, school. I thought maybe but somebody, you know, said. No, it was like one of the. Here's the four spiritual laws. No. <laughs> no. I remember one time, um, because I'm divorced, and I remember that was one time that I was flipping through the channels, and um, I just. I didn't know what I was going to do. He had just left. It was Christmas time. You know, I had my daughter. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. I'm flipping the channels, not even really paying attention to what was on television, you know, just flipping. And it came to a Christian television station. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And the woman at the exact same time that I flipped said, I didn't know what I was going to do when my husband left me. I was like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. So, So that was a rededication for me. That whole show was about women that had lost their husbands either through divorce or they had mm-hmm. left or separation or death or anything. So it was just like, all right, another recommitment. To Have you ever been life. asked to speak at these big women's conference? I mean, you, you talked about uh, Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar. Yeah, but I, I mean, haven't. I'm hoping to be. I'm <laughs> <laughs> after there, show. There's the website right on. The, <laughs> as soon great. as you said that, there it is right there. JuanitaLolita.com. Right <laughs> Call me. Um, I, I would love to. I would love to because there's a lot of things that's happened in my life that I know that other women would would be able to relate to yeah. mm-hmm. and be able to say. That's the funniest comedy, though. Yeah. It's a, a comedy that people relate yeah, to in everyday true. life. Right. Yeah, you just make yourself yeah. vulnerable, and mm-hmm. people just go, wow, yeah. I can live. You know, Beyond, yes. yes. Like yes. That, that husband I was talking about had an affair with my best friend and left during Christmas. So the woman that I was going to to say, I think my husband's having an affair, yeah. was the same one. That was Do you know how often that happens? Wow. A lot more than A than lot. I knew. Shania, At that time. Shania Twain just had that. Did she? Yep. Yep. Wow. Well, she best friend. You. Her yeah. best okay. friend. <laughs> a little good pronunciation on the B there. We you have about a minute and a half to do this, and then we're going to go to another, oh, no. one, another one of your clips. <laughs> okay. 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 That camera right there. Somebody needs to know Christ. Somebody needs to know Christ. It will be the best decision that you could make in your life. People will try to give you anything else in this world and whatever you look at is going to go away. It's going to be gone. There's nothing in this world that you can put your trust in and your faith in that's going to stay around. The only thing that is true and the only thing that will be constant is our Father, God, Jesus Christ. That is the only thing. That's the only thing that can save you. That's the only thing that will make everything else seem so insignificant. And it doesn't matter where you've come from, doesn't matter who you think you are, that doesn't matter. God loves you. God loves you. And don't waste time. Don't wait till tomorrow because you don't know if tomorrow is going to come. You have no idea. Don't waste another moment. Give your life to Christ. You'll never be sorry. Pray with someone. Ever. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, and we just ask that hearts would be opened, that people will see the truth of the gospel, 
that they won't be blindsided by this world and the things that this world has to offer because those things are nothing compared to the joy of knowing you and having you in our hearts. Lord, not having this fear of death, not having a fear of tomorrow is one of the greatest gifts you give us. And Lord, I just pray that anybody who's listening to this, that anybody that needs you would find you and would go and get into a Bible-based church, a Bible-teaching church to learn the truth of your word. Jesus, I pray this in your name. Amen. Call her. All of you women's, huge women's groups, be a great <laughs> asset. I, mean, I can just see her hitting that platform, opening the audience with laughter and joy, and then having that great music that you have, and then that Bible teaching. Wow. I mean, I got the whole thing in my head right there. <laughs> we can but, go on the road. Yeah, Let's go on we the can road. go on the <laughs> Just give her an intro. This clip that we're going to show you is just a small sample, like we opened with, mm -hmm. of the kind of comedy that she can do. And by the way, it's not all this same material. She's got material that we haven't even thought of yet because she is... I have material I haven't thought of. Yeah, she is currently <laughs> writing it. Watch this and enjoy. God bless you for watching. I don't understand why when you're on an airplane the pilot feels the need to tell you the cruising altitude. We've reached our cruising altitude of 36,000 feet. <laughs> I don't need to know that. Lie to me. I'm a woman. I'm used to it. We've reached our cruising altitude of 36 feet. Whew. Thank you. Now look, I understand that that's because I have a little bit of a fear of flying. All right? And I do. But I need to clarify that for you all. It's not a fear of dying. I know where I'm going to go when I die. That's not my issue. It's how I get there. <laughs> that's my issue. Am I going to die of electrocution? Because the judge wasn't a woman? <laughs> That's the kind of stuff I think about. And this woman told me, but oh, flying is so much safer than driving. Well, are you kidding me? Okay, when I'm in an automobile, I have on a seatbelt. So in the event of a crash, I am safe. Yes, when I'm in an airplane, I have on a seatbelt too. That's only so in the event of a crash, they can identify my remains by my seat number. <laughs> it is not as if at 36,000 feet, I'm going to do this. Shh. <laughs> Boy, am I glad I had that on. Because that could have been bad. <laughs> 